Hi, I'm Jacob and in this video we'll be introducing a new ant colony into my animal room which I showed you guys last week so if you haven't seen that video check it out. Anyway, this week has been very chaotic with this colony, Christmas coming up and custom designing for some ant nests but you'll all see that coming up so let's get right into it. The first thing I need to do is unbox and build my new 3D printer. When I first unpacked it I was quite intimidated by all the different parts however it only took a couple hours to put it together so not too bad really. I decided to get a 3D printer for a couple reasons. First being that it allows me to make custom parts quickly for things such as ant nests, feeders and maybe future tarantula enclosures. Also another reason is that I just really wanted one. I don't have to explain myself here. Here's a little compilation of me putting everything together. Here's some satisfying peels. Once it was all set up, I fired up Fusion 360 and custom made this ant nest. I tried to make it as natural as possible, but also keeping it simple. And I varied the height of the passages between the chambers. I also rounded off all the edges for a more natural look. And, after some small changes, this is what I was left with. Now, all I had to do was print it. And if you have any changes you think I should make to improve it, then let me know. I also took the liberty of 3D printing a cover for the nest, so no light enters it. Now, Due to the nature of the tubing I'm using, I need to sand down the edges of the holes just so that it properly fits. I do this using a Dremel tool. Using a cutting wheel, I also cut a test tube into smaller tubes so that it could be used as a more permanent attachment. This makes it easy to change water test tubes and when expanding the nest in the future. I also hand sanded it just to remove any excess plastic left by the Dremel. Now, for the outworld, I have this small acrylic cube with a lid that slides on and off. However, the first thing I did was drill a hole into the side to attach the tubing to. If you are ever drilling acrylic, I find the best thing to do is to go very slow and to really take your time to prevent any cracking. Here you can see I'm testing a test tube for fit. I use a test tube to attach the tubing because I find directly putting in the tubing into the acrylic causes it to crack. Once I had a hole that fit, I cut off the end of the test tube create a sort of pipe that I could attach the vinyl tubing to. I'm a big fan of this acrylic cube, I think it looks very good as an outworld. I was thinking of adding plaster of Paris to the bottom, however I decided against it, it would have made maintenance and cleaning it much harder. However, another modification needs to be made, I need to drill some ventilation holes. Once they were drilled, I also filled the holes with small bits of cotton wool to prevent any ants from escaping, which is a potential hazard with ants this small. Now that all the bits and bobs were made, it was time to assemble the nest. I began by adding a small piece of sponge into the watering hole in the nest, as I find this helps the nest maintain humidity much better. This piece of glass I have isn't perfectly cut to shape, and it's a little bit thicker than I would like, however it's more of a prototype that I can refine in the future. Then I added in all the cut up test tube connectors. Like I mentioned before, these just prevent the acrylic from cracking although they themselves are susceptible to cracking, so I need to find a fix for this at some point. Then, using hot water to soften them, I added the vinyl tubing, one leading to the outworld and the other for a water or sugar water test tube. Now for the ants. In this test tube, behind these covers, are the newest addition to my animal room, as mentioned at the end of my last video. These are a Tetramorium species, Tetramorium bicoronatum to be exact, and they're an awesome colony with multiple queens, lots of brood, and the ability to inbreed once the colony reaches maturity. Now to attach them to the nest, I steadied myself as these ants were desperate for a new space and running at hyper speed all around the tube. And oh no, the vinyl tubing didn't seem to fit. Disaster. I carried on struggling with it until finally I somehow managed to squeeze them together. Phew. To encourage the ants to move out, 
I shone a bright light onto them, although before I'd even done this, these ants had begun exploring the new space. And, to even further encourage them, I added some water through this hole here to increase the humidity in the nest. Nearly instantly, the colony began to move. Just look at that worker carrying a larva that's nearly as big as itself. Here, the first queen is entering the nest. Yes? Or maybe not. Or maybe yes? Looks like she can't made her mind up. And oops, there she goes. This worker here seems to be struggling a bit with this larva, but she eventually makes her way to this new nest. And here comes the second queen, gracefully entering. At this point, the workers seem to have enough of the queens being indecisive, so this worker grabs the third queen and ant handled her into the nest. And at this point, the ants began making many trips to make sure they got every last larva and egg into the nest. No one left behind. Once they had moved out, I replaced their old test tube with a clean water test tube and these ants seemed to have no fear as nearly instantly they explored it. Now to welcome the ants into their new home, I gave them a pre-killed doobie roach placed on a 2x2cm ant feeder that I also made myself. It just makes clean up a little bit easier. At first just a worker and surprisingly a queen were feeding from it. However, very soon, many more workers began to explore and feast on this protein-rich roach. At this point, I realised I had forgotten to give them any sugar, so I added a drop of super-concentrated sugar and very quickly the ants began to drink from it. Over the past few days, I've noticed that one of the queens doesn't stay in the nest and is usually in the outworld or water tube by herself, although the ants haven't shown any aggression towards her. I have no idea why this is, so if you have any guesses, please let me know. I'll make sure to keep you guys updated on these ants, and that's all for today. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know, and I'll make sure to respond. Please consider subscribing, it would really help me out. Let's try to get to 500 subscribers by the end of the year. Thank you so much for watching, and see you guys next week.